to finish up on filters, I'm just going to kind of scroll through it right here, but you can see that there's a lot of filters that you can use. You have ways of blending, block color, blur, all sorts of different type filters. And the best thing to do is really kind of go through and play with them to see how they work and how you can use them in your workflow. Because to be honest, a lot of the other filters are not quite as complicated as the ones we've gone over and they're a lot easier to learn, although you'll see that they have keyframers, most of them, and, and they work basically the same way as the others do. However, I do want to show you how to layer filters and combine filters together. Now, there used to be a filter in here called Combine Filters, and it's still here. I never use that, and the reason I never use it is because of the fact that, for some reason, it seems to take more CPU power when using Combine Filters than just combining the filters themselves. So I'm going to show you a couple little tips and tricks here on combining filters and how they actually work. So I'm going to highlight my good friend Greg here again because I enjoy torturing him. And the first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to bring down old movie because I want him to look old, older than he actually is. So I'm going to bring old movie down. And as you can see inside of old movie, I literally have eight different things going on at the same time. So I'm going to add a little film grain here. I'm going to do a little border darkening here because I think it needs to have border darkening here. So I've got all that, and let's see what he looks like right here. Okay, so here we have kind of the flicker going on. We have the, the scratches. We have the hairs and everything that's happening, and that's fine. But the coloring doesn't quite the seem the way that it really should. So I'm going to come in here to some of my presets here, and I'm going to look for sepia type 1. And this is just a preset that when I pull it down, you'll see that it's just color balance. And if I bring it up, you'll see that it's been adjusted. So I could go in and actually tweak it, even though it is a preset. And now let's take a look. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit better look here. Then what I'm going to do to it is I'm going to come in to my video filters, and I'm going to grab... Let's see here. What do I want to grab? I'm going to look down, look down. I'm going to, I know it when I'm going to see it because of the fact that it'll just reach out and grab me because it's soft focus. So I'm going to come into my soft focus here. I'm going to place it down on him somewhat. And so I'm going to start to play it now and take a look at what that looks like. Ah, you know what? A little too soft. So I'm going to open that up here and let's just bring the blur back just a tad bit here. Bring back the brightness just a little bit, and I'm going to sit there and select OK. And so now I have this kind of old, out-of-focus looking type thing. Now I really want to torture this shot completely and totally. Well, actually, before I do that, I've got the soft focus there. Now I'm going to bring in my mask tool. And my mask tool, I'm just going to do this to kind of show a point because I'm not really trying to be artistic here or anything, but I'm just going to bring in a region here of, of a rectangle. And that's it. And then on the outside of it, I'm going to go into block color. But what I really want to do is, is make sure that it goes all the way out to the sides there. And what I really want to do is I don't want it to be white at all. What I would like it to be is, is black. And I just, so I'll go into the setup of that and just bring back my Y value to make that black. Okay, so if I have that shot there and now I'm playing it back for you, you'll see that it looks pretty good. But what happens if I would have put that mask on beforehand? Can you see here how all of a sudden that line has gotten a little bit hazy? Because it makes a difference on what level you put these and what order you put them in. So if I had put the mask on first and then put the soft focus in, you would see that my edge would not be crisp. But by just grabbing the mask and moving it down, it now is completely and totally tightened that up, and now that's a straight line going across it, and I can play my video with all these filters on it. Now, if I wanted to work on the sepia and not see everything else, then I could very easily just uncheck everything except for my color balance, go into my color balance, and work on my color balance and get the exact look that I want, select OK, and then all I have to do is just recheck everything, and I can work on one thing at a time, two things at a time, you know, in other words, seeing two things at a time, and be able to have a lot of control over what I've been able to do there. So basically, when you're using multiple filters, don't use the combined filter just because of the fact that your real time is going to hurt from it somewhat. But doing it in this way allows you to be able to bring it in. Now, I've done all this. 
If I highlight those and draw a box around and highlight them, I can now right click and say save as a current user or separate preset. And now look what I have here. I have this huge preset that I can name and we'll just name it Mike's CRUD because that was really cruddy. And now I could use that combination of filters on another clip if I want to. I could bring it in on this clip. Oh, and I, you know what? I did that wrong. Let me delete that one right there. Go back into this one, highlight them, and then just pull that up there in the video filters. There we go. Now I did it correctly. And as you can see, I can just grab that down now, place it on this other clip. There's all of my filters right there. And notice that they're all there. That I can turn them on and off at the same time if I want. Or I can work with them individually and retweak them on a different shot so that you know, they can be seen. So working with multiple filters, creating a preset with those multiple filters, being able to work on each of the filters individually with the other ones turned off without having to stop the tweaks that you had on those filters makes working with a combination of filters a real joy actually inside of Edius.